can see that Aki is already uh, on his way. So let's bring in Aki. So uh, it feels like a, a um, you, Aki. feels like a long time since we saw Aki, and uh, we're just waiting for for Yako as well. Um, but I'm sure he's uh, he's going to be on his way in just a second. So maybe uh, oh here he is. Okay, so bring in. Yeah, yeah I, just, I just had to click something. <laughs> this 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 is it, right? It's much easier when you're in person and you can just walk on a stage, right? We've, we've been walking since the age of two, right? Yeah. It's like, but now it's like, okay, which button is it? And uh, yeah, it's a bit crazy, but we're 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 getting there, right? And I think this platform is uh, is really, um, yeah, it's growing and it's 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 really good. So let's. Uh, Let's kick off then, right? So we, we didn't get many questions in on the stage, um, but like if we're talking now and you have a question, just pop it and I'll try and keep an eye on that stage to see if there's any questions coming in from that. In the meantime, um, you know, I'll, I'll try and kick off the discussion here. So, um, you know, we're talking about productizing APIs and platforms and, uh, you know, this is something very close to my heart as well. Um, if I have like a provocative question, so I said in my uh, in my presentation yesterday, if we look at the um, customer as being someone who is the person who pays for a product, right? So if it's a digital product, an API, right? They're the person who's paying for it. That's the customer. A user does not, right? So so the the customer is the person that you want to make your API products for. And what I went with that is I built up to to saying okay. The developer is not the customer of the API product, and you shouldn't be building API products for uh, developers, unless, of course, you're Twilio and you have developer products, right? So a lot of organizations out there, I don't know, telecommunications and banking and whatever, we, we, we had the presentation earlier from Anna, I think it was, and she's she's got a, her target audience are um, corporate customers, right? So in that essence, I'm saying, okay, don't don't build APIs for developers, and and you know I'm taking it one step further and saying stop using the developer dot subdomain, right? Start using like you know Swisscom doesn't have digital dot, right? Because it has a more inclusive audience, right? And I do realize you know I've got the DX doctor in this call as well, so uh, <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, Jakob, what's what's your immediate feeling on that? Am I am I talking like you know am I a crazy man or am I onto something? No, 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 uh, no, I. Uh... You said the keyword that uh, depending of your your uh, company and your product, some of them are developer focused, as you said, Twilio, and and uh, Stripe. Those are they actually take away the pain from the developers' uh, everyday life. They solve the problems, and then you're building primary for the developers because they will actually sell the solution in inside their own companies because it will actually solve their problem and enable them to make more money more faster and easier way so yes i understand your point of point in the view and uh yes i mostly talk about this kind of companies when i'm talking about from my heart about the importance of developer experience then i'm talking about this kind of uh, products as you mentioned mm -hmm. yeah and i i also feel that you know treating the uh developer is a user but like the key user like you know um someone that you want to have a great experience uh but inviting them at the right period in time i think aki in your presentation as well you were talking about you know sometimes you're um building apis and it takes like six to nine months to onboard someone and i i would really like to you know get to the bottom of that and say why does it take six to nine months to to onboard someone it's because you've got a lot of you know business work to do first, a lot of contracts and stuff like that, I guess. What are, what are the key reasons for that? Yeah, well, in my experience, it's, it's partly because of the uh, different companies. So they work at different speed and they might have different priorities than you have. So it's part of the contract negotiation, but then they might have really this project mentality that once they have their contract sign they'll start working on it and it's just it feels like when you have created an api it really feels that 
it shouldn't take that much time. But in my experience, it always surprises me that when you get partners on board, the yeah, everything getting everything set is taking a lot of time, and it's getting taking a lot of effort as well to actually look at their API practices, like how they are actually consuming the API and are they using them right and things like that. But isn't isn't that also then a sign that you know there was a failure to properly productize the API because the, the idea is that you know you have a, a, a productized API with like small, medium, large plans and the consumer comes along and, and starts using it, right? You know yeah, that definitely. day hopefully. Right? Yeah, definitely that's that's a uh, one sign of a failure. But in uh, when you have partner APIs, they usually don't have the same low barrier entry compared to our public APIs because they might be a little bit more complicated than, than the uh, public ones, which yeah, is unfortunate. Just, just, yeah, yeah, sorry. Please continue, Aki. Go on, go on. OK, but just, just to remind you that if we would take a look at uh, what happened six months before, so we didn't have it, even the whole pandemic yet. So, yeah. so things will change sometimes really fast in six months, and, and therefore I, I also think that what Alan, Alan mentioned that uh, how it could take so long because uh, it, sometimes it's uh, ages, even even six months. Yeah, and that's right. And the really what I've seen that they are not really like consumers are not actively developing their part. They just sort of fiddle around a little bit and then forget the whole thing. And then just before the deadline, they actually start building something. <laughs> right. That's that's what we've seen, right? That that's you know, it's dreams versus reality a lot of the time, right? You you um especially when you don't have the API yet. There's many times I had the situation where I was trying to create this as a product um and it was a project that was leading and I was using the project as a vehicle to get me to an API product, which is never a really good thing. Um, but yeah, then you're, you're at the, you know, you have to deal with the partner and, and, and their timetable, et cetera. So I do understand like the reality of the situation sometimes. Uh, I, I, would, I would add something to Aki's, Aki's uh, something caught, caught my eye and my ear. It was the thing that the, the, the uh, partner APIs are not treated like the public APIs. And that, that is the biggest mistake you can do because uh, you should treat all the internal and partner APIs, public APIs with the same process, same requirements, and uh, do the development the same way all the time. It might, it might sound uh, insane, but at least in, in our platform development, platform of trust, uh, some of the APIs started as, as internal APIs. And suddenly in the development, we actually needed to make them partner APIs. And now if we wouldn't treat them as products in the beginning, we would need to do enormous work again just to get them to the partner level. And again, the same one might happen that one of these APIs will need to be public APIs. So we need to be ready for the moment immediately, in my opinion. Sometimes it looks like a waste of time, but then again, you have plenty of developers from plenty of organizations when you're actually building an, uh, a platform. And then they need to have the proper documentation. They need to have the same uh, kind of support like the like any kind of third party developer. So it actually makes sense to treat them uh, from the beginning uh, as, a, as a product, not in the middle, middle of the process somewhere when you actually are facing the situation. Yeah, so we've used API layering for that, that internal APIs have different capabilities. So for mm -hmm. example, partners can't change prices, but mm -hmm. internal applications can change partners' the prices. So we sort of build layers, like there's a domain APIs, and then there are more like experience layer APIs for certain use cases that it's yeah, the scope and the capabilities are slightly different in, in certain mm. scenarios. Mm. Yeah, but I've seen that uh, quite a bit, especially on the, on the MuleSoft side as well. They like to push that, you know, system mm. process uh, and experience APIs. I think there's pros and cons to that. Um, 
yeah, I, I, I can kind of understand it, but but also, you know, I, I do agree with Yako, whatever you build, you should sort of bake in um, the basic ingredients. And uh, I quite like, you know, service mesh for that a little bit on the internal east-west data center and that, you know, you always have like, you know, standard proxy with security built into it. And, uh, you know, for me, it's like a mini product in a way. So, so I like that as well. Um, Okay, uh, just to mix it up a little bit. So we spoke a little bit about you know products here, but what about you know platforms? Um, something Alan Glickenhaus said yesterday. He was talking a little bit about uh, platforms, and I quite liked it when he said that. Um, on the one hand, you've got like you know what we've been calling platform for years. So in the IT world, you know, um, I, I've got a database platform, 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 which is more of like a technical platform. Um, to what extent do you see your customers treating their like API uh, management tools as as that kind of like more IT platform? And how many customers are you seeing are adopting it as more like you know in a business sense, two sided platforms with producers and consumers? So do you have any examples of where you know companies have kind of gotten that as a concept? Well, I'll be I can, yeah, <laughs> I, I I can go first. I, there's there's at least one platform in automotive industry called Fortelis.io, which is basically a platform business model. You can either publish APIs on it, or you can create applications and sell the applications in the marketplace. And that's one example of platform business. But I haven't seen it taking off like at scale yet but it, it's really interesting interesting approach but do you think that every api program should um go towards that that model you know even if it's for internal um use that they see themselves as a platform yeah i think internally it makes a lot of sense i'm i'm really like the idea of building ecosystems and, and and platforms and even for internal development because that reduces the friction from the uh, software delivery life cycle and i think that's a really good way to get started with platforms and whether that becomes a public platform at some stage that's uh, another question but i think it's great way to reduce friction from development teams yeah i, I think that's um coming a little bit into that uh, jeff jeff uh, bezos uh, amazon web services story again where you say okay you start internally you treat yourself as a platform then at some point you you've got something you can take externally right so i i think that's what you're saying there as well i i agree with yeah. that um i also saw um, I've spoken a lot about Swisscom over the last couple of days because uh, I think it's kind of they they, they got it right, and um, they're really treating the the internal uh, developers or teams uh, as as providers in, in that that platform, and, and they've got like a software as a service mentality. So they're they're coming and saying, okay, for example, security, we've got a solution for you. Um, if you stop exposing the stuff yourself, like via ancient SOAP uh, services, which are just like not secure, et cetera, you come to us, um, you know, to our platform and we'll, we'll take care of that for you. Um, have you have you seen anyone like go to that level of maturity? Is that kind of like, a, is it a, a thing nowadays or are we still a long way from that? I think that's a thing nowadays. I, I, I've been building such platforms before and I, I think it's becoming a, a thing. Cool. I, I know I, I see that uh Mariuka is crazy joined the conversation as well. We'll take a couple of uh points from her. She's she's saying okay business Finland is is building Visit Finland Travel Data Hub, which is a multi-sided platform for travel data. That's a good example. And uh, she's got more she's got loads some examples uh Timma for hairdressers. Uh, I didn't know that one. Thor Torfi and Uto.net for goods. And, uh, you know, she's saying, okay, it's basically for Finland, but there's a lot of stuff around. Also, Ivan is a Finnish originated technical platform, uh, which uses platform economy business model. So, Mariuka, 
tori.fi, sorry. <laughs> That's the one. Hey, great. Now, swinging things back over a little bit, back to you know the, the, the product side of things. Um, simple question, right? We've been talking about API products for a long time now. Can you um, come up with your favorite API products out there? So you, you've been around now a little while. Uh, out there having a look around at different websites it could be i don't know mcdonald's bmw whatever you know have you seen an api product you look at and you say yeah that's it that's that's how it should be done well obviously twilio is is a great example uh paypal in in my opinion is another one okay very very developer centric uh products right Yarko? yeah well yeah Everyone says always the stripe, so I'm not gonna say that one, but it's still a hit. Uh, I'm gonna say send grid. That's that's yeah. a good good developer approach also. Yeah, that's Twilio as well because Twilio owns send grid. Yeah. But again, again, these are yeah. these are developer oriented again. So, <laughs> but what what's interesting there is that if if you go to um, Stripe, I think it is. And you go to the documentation, and it is beautiful documentation. I love it. You know, I just sometimes go there just to look at the documentation. I'm not even joking. And at the very top of the documentation, it's got in, in kind of bold. And it, it says that if you are more of a business user, this isn't the place for you. And they, they provide a link which links them out to a digital marketplace, right? And there's some, some apps there. And then you're talking like a, a low code or no code. Um, version of that right so I, I think that's a really good example of, of you know how stripe we're also able to get that customer segment so that maybe decision maker segment that you know wouldn't necessarily be able to understand the documentation if they'd have continued scrolling down but they pull them out at that point and they, they throw them into a marketplace marco yeah yeah that's a, a excellent point and uh, i'm more like a business perspective guy and and uh, Therefore, I, I think that that's that's a, also one one of the things that API is sort of a mediating device between the technical people and business people, and then like you describe this kind of a way how you can uh, show the both audiences the way how you you can tell the story and, and uh, use their own words to explain what is the value there, and then because they have different preferences and uh, different priorities also what they want to see. So I think that this is probably something that we should learn and, and distribute also with the other other cases. Yeah, and I could also see it with, uh, I think it's Jana uh, from Nordia, um, some of his APIs as well. When you go to the uh, Nordia developer portal, you can see now they've got really um, clear information for business or you know your corporate customers on one side and on the other side you know they've got the developer story as well um it's it's, it's very clear you know um I, I think that you know the next step they need to make is to have like that call of action for for the business uh user as well but it's i think it's a fantastic step that that we're seeing there and also um uh mercedes ben's website the the best looking developer portal on the planet let's face it um, it's kind of was lacking that kind of thing as well for business users to get in onto the um, onto the platform. And now they've added a section as well to say, okay, more of a you know value proposition for uh, for the business users as well. Alrighty. Yeah, what, what I really like, I really like the idea of domain driven design and the uh, using ubiquitous language all over the place. That I think we as a technologist we tend to use technology terms but maybe it's not always needed that we actually use the, uh, the right business terms and speak the same language as business users because it's the same with the api design that i'd really prefer that business experts would be involved in API design and they can't be involved if the language is not inclusive. Absolutely, yeah. And um, also, you know, when, when we're looking at these um, APIs as products, 
I get some people come to me and say, okay, you know, I've got 150 APIs and they're kind of like more system APIs, shall we say. Um, and this, they say, okay, Alan, well, where do we start uh, in terms of, you know, turning these into a products? Where would we start? And what would be your advice to them going forwards? Where would you start? Start with your customers. Customers first. What yeah. they actually need. So uh, yeah. is there something you can, you can, you can build and uh, make their life easier? One part with the APIs. Is it possibly you need to just pop, uh, publish one of your APIs and try it with uh, one or two customers and see how it goes. But again, it, you need to go from the customer point of view again. And so yeah, customer, customer demand. Customer in this case, you know, that are you saying like their existing customers from their, you know, organization, the guys who are already paying them money? Well, we, uh, if, if you're not uh, uh, constantly probing what is your customer base? What are their needs? Then you're doing it wrong again. So you you should always have some kind of an idea where they are going and what's their needs. So you can build a, against that your API. You can you can you can look at those needs and then map your APIs, whatever you call those system APIs or whatever. Possibly you need to combine a couple of those uh, in, in in the API management layer. Uh, and any abstraction and then publish it for them for testing and see how it goes uh, is it a hit or or not <laughs> right right and it's like i, th I think it's um i don't know if it was earlier saying that they they do a lot of prototyping as well right um getting it out there as soon as possible you know i remember something we were really uh promoting back in uh uh show my age now like 1996 uh, when I stu studied like rapid development, it was all about, you know, prototyping, producing it, getting it in front of the customer effectively or whoever's using it and then, then getting the quick feedback, right? And I think that's really uh, something that we should be doing in the API world a lot more, especially with like this contract uh, driven development as well. Exactly. Um, you, you, don't, you don't even need to implement it. Uh, you can do it by mocking and uh, you, you get the response immediately that, hey, is this going to be something that someone is ready to pay for <laughs> or get some value out of it. And then you can make a decision after some calculations, can we actually produce this kind of functionality easily with our architecture or does it actually mean significant, significant changes or something like that? Sometimes good API, what the customers need is freaking impossible to make, uh, make happen in your own, own backend or something. And it's gonna be a. It's it's not gonna happen. <laughs> True. Okay. We've we've got like one minute, so we can kind of just just round it off. But um, does anyone have any advice? If you're more like a technical guy, and um, you're kind of a bit worried about speaking to um, customers because you're a technical guy. Let's face it. Do you have any kind of like gem of advice that you would give to a technical person in that case? Just just to add it. Yeah, Jarko had a good point previously about the starting with the customer. But uh, as a university guy, I have to say that uh, please read a couple of books or good papers because I think that then you can avoid a lot of different uh, things that you will absolutely encounter. Otherwise, you can avoid those. Our book is good, Jarko and I and Marika. All right. And uh, on that, uh, that bombshell, I think we can. Uh, call it a day gentlemen thank you very much for your uh, participation uh, i really enjoyed that i could have kept going for another hour at least um but thanks and uh yeah goodbye